So my voice is pretty much back. I would say that I'm like 90% there, but it's a lot better than last week where I sounded like a dying giraffe. So I'm sorry that you guys had to sit through that entire episode. My deepest condolences. But anyways, welcome to Setup Wars episode 125 budget edition, where we're gonna be looking at some setups based on a budget. We got some high-end budgets, we got some low-end budgets. So let's grab our wallets, put them right in front of us. Let's hold hands and cry while watching this episode because we're gonna realize that most of these setups are still better than what we have at home. Let the setup wars begin. Before you guys skip straight to the setups, I wanna let you know that Skullcandy recently released their new Hesh 3 wireless headphones, which is an affordable alternative to their crushers they released not too long ago. These are much lighter. They offer a 22 hour battery life with rapid charge, allowing you to get four hours of playtime in just 10 minutes of charging. It features 40 millimeter drivers that sound incredible with a nice heavy bass, and you get noise isolation thanks to the comfy memory foam cushions that wrap around your ear. You can fold it and take it with you wherever you go, and they come in several different colors. I know I said that the Crushers were my main pair of headphones, but honestly, these are more my style. The extra bass from the Crushers were a little too much for me, and personally, I didn't take advantage of it. And plus, these are in red, so they match my color scheme even better, and it's lighter and more portable. So I'll drop a link below in case you guys want to check it out. Again, a huge thanks to Skullcandy for sponsoring this video. Kicking off the episode, we got Manny in a very clean black and orange setup featuring a single 27-inch monitor from BenQ that's hooked up against a custom backboard that he made. In fact, his entire desk was custom built and he designed it in 3DS Max. Nothing says budget than building your very own desk. I mean, at least this way, you can customize it to fit your needs. He built a dedicated spot for his PC on the bottom left and he attached a USB hub next to it. It is currently rocking an i5-3570 and a GT610. Aside from the PC, he also has a MacBook Pro for the portability factor. A few things I really like about this setup. The headphone hanger that he made for his Colton gaming headset, the shelves to store his PS4 games, and the cable management. He took advantage of his entire backboard and tucked the rest of the cables and power strips underneath the desk in a pullout drawer. He did keep the surface area nice and tidy thanks to the wireless peripherals, and he did a nice job hiding the wires from both the Wesdar speakers. Like I said earlier, this is a very clean setup. I feel like the only thing that's really missing are some black and orange skins for your PS4. I mean, if you made the extra effort to skin your MacBook, why not skin the console as well? I feel like it can use some orange to give it a nice contrast against the black drawer underneath. Manny also stated that his PC isn't powerful enough to play games, so he's only using it for productivity while he games mainly on his PS4. Now I know what you guys are thinking, if he actually used the money that he spent on the PS4 and all of those PS4 games, he would have built himself a really nice gaming PC. And you're right, I'm actually not gonna defend him in this episode because I have no excuses. But those were his choices based on his budget. I mean, I do feel like there are a few pricey tech pieces in this setup, but overall, there definitely was a budget involved. Otherwise, he would have picked up better speakers, a better headset, a better PC, and better peripherals. Regardless, this is a very clean and organized black and orange setup. Props on all the custom work and thank you, Manny, for entering. Speaking of clean and budget setups, Mikel is next up. He's rocking the 24-inch AOC monitor that's sitting on top of the IKEA monitor stand. And below that, we got the Logitech K810 keyboard and the MX Master mouse combo. Once again, we have another wireless setup. So for audio, he's rocking a pair of JBL Pebble speakers and the popular Bose QuietComfort 15 headphones. So someone pointed out to me a few episodes on Setup Wars that I was using the word symmetry incorrectly. Take this setup for example. So the monitor and the two speakers are considered symmetrical. However, the headset and the IKEA plant are asymmetrical. Even though they complement each other, they are not the same size, hence why I was incorrect to call them symmetrical. I know these are very technical terms and most of you guys don't even care about this because you know what I'm trying to say, but I wanna be as accurate as possible in my videos. So again, a huge thanks to whoever was that pointed it out in the comment section. I appreciate it. Powering the setup is an ASUS laptop with an i7 3610QM processor, whatever the hell that is, eight gigs of RAM and a GT 650M. Clearly, Mikhail didn't have a budget for an actual gaming PC. K810 
cable management is very clean thanks to the net that comes with the IKEA desk and everything else is tucked away behind the Alex drawer. A very clean and simplistic setup, not much I can recommend here, thank you Mikhail for entering. At number 3 we got Stefan in a slightly higher budget setup featuring a 24 inch Samsung monitor sitting on the Satechi monitor stand and a 32 inch Hisense TV up top. For peripherals he's using the popular Red Dragon K55 3 keyboard which by the way is a solid $35 mechanical keyboard. I featured it a few times on the channel and it's one of the best mech keyboards you can buy under 50 bucks. Definitely check it out if you guys are interested, I'll leave a link below. The mouse is from Combat or Wing, I think that's how you say it, and it kind of looks like a ripoff of the Mad Cat's mouse if I'm being frank. But nonetheless, Steven stayed consistent with the black and red color scheme, so props to him. Speaking of color scheme, he's rocking a sweet black and red mini ITX gaming PC featuring the 6600K and a GTX 1050 Ti. But Ed, that's not a budget PC, it actually has good specs. Not quite, it's still based on a budget because if he didn't have a budget, he would have picked up a 1060 or even a 1070. So you guys see what I'm trying to say here? Do you see now why this is Setup Wars Budget Edition and not Poor Edition? Speaking of his PC, he does have a 13 inch Asus laptop resting next to his iPad mini in the corner. I will give you points on those wall shelves. It's a great way to add additional storage space while improving the look of the setup. Most people use hangers to hang their headphones, but Steven uses it to hang his mini guitar. For audio, he's rocking the Harman Kardon 2.1 desktop speakers and his Sennheiser Urbanite XL headphones hanging underneath the desk. Cable management is also on point for the most part. I'm glad that you tied both the keyboard and mouse wires together, and it looks like he made his very own cable raceway using some white duct tape, but other than that, it's looking pretty good. Also, that's a cool looking USB hub that he hooked up underneath the desk. I mean, it's got some crappy reviews on it from Amazon, but it does look pretty dope. Not a bad budget setup, thank you Steven for entering. Coming in at number 4 is Vince and his lightly themed Star Wars setup featuring the 24 inch BenQ monitor, we got the Corsair K65 keyboard and the Mionix caster mouse. It also looks like he's going with the black and red theme, judging by the LEDs. On the desk he's got a pair of Logitech Z340 speakers, an Xbox One controller, he's also got his smartphone on a stand and a few Star Wars props. The Blue Yeti microphone has an unusual spot on top of the PC, so if you have the extra budget, I strongly recommend a boom arm for that and you can actually hook it up on the side of your table, it's gonna make it way more convenient for you. For cable management, I think that the Signum rack was a bit overkill since you don't have much on there. I feel like a simple raceway would have sufficed, especially considering that you don't have any power strips or anything bulky on there. It's just wires. So yeah, I recommend either a raceway or even some cable sleeves would have worked just fine there. The PC powering the setup is equipped with an i3-6100 and an Asus Strix 1060. See, now this is a PC build that actually makes sense to use a stock heatsink. He's using a locked CPU, so there is no need for an aftermarket cooler. So good work, Vince. It looks like you did your homework. Or maybe you just watch a lot of TechSource videos. The only thing that really bothered me were those random black squares on the backboard underneath your desk. But other than that, it's a dope setup. Thank you, Vince, for entering. Wrapping up the episode, we got Walter White and his extreme budget setup. And I say extreme budget because he's using a plastic bin as a monitor riser to hold up his 24 inch Samsung display. And if that isn't budget enough, the desk he's using consists of four legs that he picked up from Eco Center, and the tabletop is an old door of a friend of his. That's right, his desk is an actual door. For peripherals, he's using the Fujitech portable Bluetooth keyboard, and that's paired with the Gigabyte Thor M7 mouse. He's also using two headphones. One of them is a Bluetooth headphone and the other one is the Siberia Prism 3 headset that actually broke down during a road trip which he later fixed according to his notes. By the way, I'm liking your budget headphone hangers on your PC. And speaking of PCs, it's actually an interesting build. So the case itself is made up of three junk PCs which he ended up painting in black afterwards. In terms of hardware, it's actually not that bad. It has an i5-4460, 16 gigs of RAM and an AMD RX 470. Aside from the PC, he also has a console. In fact, he's still rocking the original PS3 system from 2006. The fact that it's still running even after 11 years is incredible. And finally, we got the cable management, and I have mixed feelings about it. 
I mean he did tie the cables together and use duct tape to cover the cable on the ground, but aesthetically it doesn't look that great. I'm not sure what your reasoning was behind the duct tape and routing the cables in that direction, but if you can, I do recommend a wall raceway which will look a lot cleaner. Also props on your self-made cable management net underneath the desk, that's actually a pretty clever idea. Overall, you did make this setup work despite your tight budget. And since we are hanging stuff on the side of your PC, I do recommend these super cheap controller hangers that you can hook up on the side of your PC for the PS3 controllers. But other than that and the wall raceway that I recommended earlier, it's a pretty decent setup. Thank you, Walter, for entering. So that wraps up this episode of Setup Wars. Which one of these setups will take home the crown? You guys get to vote in the comment section, so make sure you drop your votes below. I'll announce the winners on my Twitter and InstaFail accounts on the weekend. Make sure to follow me there if you guys are interested. I love your nose hairs. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.